Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're talking translation with headphone correction. Not everyone has access to a full-fledged commercial recording studio or even just a dedicated room in their house, kind of like I have here, where you can set up a pair of studio monitors and be able to listen. Or you're on the road, you're doing something, you're going to your clients, and you don't want to be able to bring all of the speakers that you might need. And I say that plurally because there's different kinds of speakers out there. But whatever you have for your studio monitors at home, if you're traveling a lot, or you just don't have access to it, or you have people at home that you don't want to disturb, you probably are leaning towards using headphones. And headphones is just fine when we're working in audio. You can do tracking, you can do mixing in headphones. A lot of top tier mixing engineers just do it in headphones. And you don't know that. The only thing that matters is how it sounds at the end. So whether it's mixed on studio monitors or headphones, as long as it sounds good in the end, you've got a great result but sometimes our headphones can deceive us a little. All headphones have a different frequency response. It's how those sets of headphones reproduce anywhere from the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that our human ears can hear. But thanks to the guys over at Hornet Audio, we now have the VHS plugin to help us correct some of these headphone curves. So let's take a look by diving into the DAW. Okay, so here it is. This is the Hornet VHS, Virtual Headphone System. And you can see I've already been messing around with it, but this is the interface. It's very simple. There's two sides. There's the headphone correction side and the room simulation side. Let's start with the headphone correction side. At the time of filming this video, there are over 160 different headphone EQ curves built into this plugin, and they're growing the catalog of different headphones that are in here. And it's all different brands and different models. If you go in to be able to select your headphones, you do exactly that. You go brand and then model. So if you do none and flat, it doesn't do any EQ corrections to kind of negate what your headphones may or may not have in their response. Today, I have my AKG. 240 Studios. These things are really cheap. They're like 60 bucks, but they're great. They're open back headphones, and I'm going to put a link to them down in the description in case you want to pick up a pair for yourselves. And these things are great for when we're mixing. They're not so great for tracking because they're open back and we don't want any bleed. But when we're mixing, these are a great little pair to just throw in your bag and take with you. They kind of sound the way they sound, and that's fine, but if we want to be able to have our mixes or our productions translate. And that's having things sound the same across multiple different systems, headphones, studio monitors, car speakers, hi-fi systems. You want to be able to translate. So you can counteract the headphone frequency response with something like the Hornet VHS. So let's do exactly that. We'll go brands. These are AKGs, but you can see there's a ton of options in here, including stuff from Apple. Audis, Audio Technica, keep going down, Beats, Bear Dynamic, Bose, Focal, Fostex, Head, there's a ton in here. Lots of different options. And like I said, they're always adding in more with subsequent updates. They're going to continuously update this with different headphones. But I'm going to go back to what I have, which is AKG. And in AKG, you can see by default, it goes to the K240s, the Mark II. That's not what I have. I have the K240 Studios. Go to the model, and there it is. Here's my 240 Studios. Maybe you have something else from them. There's a lot inside the AKG. But I'm just going to go to my 240 Studios, hit OK, and this is the headphone correction curve. It's what it's countering when I'm listening through the 240s. Now, what I'm hearing versus what you are going to hear are going to be vastly different because you're not listening to my headphones on my ears. But I am going to put this plugin in and out of bypass so you can hear what it's doing. If you have these headphones, listen through them while we're going through this video and it's probably gonna sound pretty good, pretty flat because I was messing with this earlier. But if you don't have these headphones or you're using something else, it's gonna sound different. You would definitely hear the change because I have this plugin right on my track, which I highly suggest not doing. Put this on like your main or your listen bus if you have that. 
you can do that here and then just disable it if it's on your main before you print or if it's on your listen bus, you're fine. It's not gonna print. Then on the right hand side is the room simulation side. In here, when you're wearing headphones, and you're mixing in them, we'll say, you have a lot of direct left and right information. But the difference between mixing on headphones and mixing with studio monitors is studio monitors fill the space in and they're not pushed up against your ear so you have a direct left and right. There's space in between what's going on here. There's some space in between my monitors and space past my monitors by you guys, but over this way. And so the sound coming out has room to be able to open up and breathe and sound like it's coming from a certain position instead of just shoved on the side of my head. The room simulation side of the plugin allows us to kind of add that sense of speakers in a room feel. And with this, we can actually adjust where the speakers are positioned in the room and where we are in relation to the speakers. That's what the listener control here does, is it changes our relationship to the speakers. So if I have it all the way away, I'm very distant from my speakers. They're not going to sound far away, but the frequency response and how a room would act and treat the sound, that's what we're going to hear. Like I said before, it's a relationship of speakers to listeners. So if I start moving the speakers, that's the only thing that's going to move. But if I put the listener at 50% and then I move the speakers, you're going to see not only will the listener move, but the speakers will move as well because it's a ratio of distance from listener to speakers. They're arbitrary numbers, but just the lower the number, the closer to either a surface for speakers or closer to the speakers themselves if you put the listener like right in between these things. All right, so that's it. That's all the controls. It's just selecting what headphones you have and if you want to turn the correction on or off, that's what these little selectors are up here are doing and the room simulation. So I'm going to leave both of these on. I'm going to reset the room simulation back to default. If you have a pair of these headphones, this is going to sound great. We said this before. If not, you're definitely going to hear the difference that this plugin is doing, but it's not going to be kind of what you want right now because it's probably not going to sound great. This is tuned to different types of headphones, but it's time to don the headphones and let's take a listen. Okay, so like I said before, I have this directly on my track, which I don't suggest you do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let this play for a little bit. This is the song Behind the Sun from the bands of the 39. There'll be a link down in the description. And thanks again to these guys for letting us still use this song. I'm gonna hit play and let this go for a couple bars and then I'm gonna take it out of bypass and you'll hear the drastic difference. Now for me, it's gonna go from some things sounding really pokey and kind of no low ends to a nice little mid boost to flattened out. That mid boost is gonna come down. Some of those really harsh frequencies are going to settle in and my low end is going to kind of balance into all of that. That's what this counter corrective curve is doing. And you can see how far it's going. So around 230, it's minus 3 dB or so. And then up here, some of my resonances, 1.5K and 4K. These are things that this correction is going to be doing for these headphones. So get ready for this. Okay, now again, I know that that sounds drastically different because it's correcting the headphones that are on my head right now or the headphones that are on your head right now if you have these. But now we're gonna move into the room simulation side. There's really only so much I can do about the headphone correction side. Yes, I could go through here and show you all of the brands and all of the different models from all of the different brands, but if you wanna check out what is already in here, there's actually a list available on the website, which is linked down below where you can also pick up this plugin if you want to grab that as well, and you can check all of the models on that list. So now let's go over to Room Simulation, and this one is way more subtle. This one's probably going to be a little difficult to hear for some, because what it's changing is this room that obviously it's simulating, a uh, duh, 
but it's going to change the relationship of the speakers, which are the headphones, and if they sound like they're directly on my sides, or if they sound pushed a little bit more forward, and then how far I am is this listener control to those speakers and where I am in the room in relationship to them. Sounds weird, subtle changes for this one, but try to take a listen. If you're not already wearing headphones, go ahead and throw them on because I'm going to take the correction off and we're just going to do the room simulation on these. So I highly suggest wearing headphones for this part. Here, right here, I have the speakers in the quote unquote middle of the room and my listener right in between these speakers. But listen what happens when I shift the listener back a little and listen to the guitars and like the mids of the guitars. There's a little honkiness that's going to kind of go away. See if you can hear it. So like we said, extraordinarily subtle, but it's definitely in there and happening, and I'm manipulating it as I adjust these controls. So there it is. That is the Hornet Audio VHS, or Virtual Headphone System. If you want to pick up a copy of this plugin, use the link down in the description, and it's at a really good price. As of right now, it's, in euros, $10.99. That is €10.99. Translated to US dollars, that's less than $15 for this plugin. Something extraordinarily affordable and will allow you to have the confidence in your headphones and your maybe mobile production or quiet production that your mixes and your productions will be able to translate to different systems because you're not fooled by the room, or in this case, the headphones that may be adding too many frequencies or not having enough of the frequencies you need. It balances everything out so that you can make informed decisions in your productions. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. Want to talk plugins or just tips and tricks? Join the Discord. There's a link down in the description. Want to work with me on your project? Awesome. I'd love to work with you. Let's get that started at timplansbum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.